Hey guys, welcome back, and today we are going to be talking about my top 10 quarterbacks in the 2024 NFL Draft. Right now we are doing weekly positional rankings. I think we might up that and do a couple of extras this week. Um, if there's a position group that you guys want to see, well, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, I have done full breakdowns on almost each and every one of these quarterbacks, so hit the link in the description That'll take you to the playlist where you can get my full opinions on each of the quarterbacks. I don't have time to go over my full scouting report and do all of that stuff in this video, but I did in that one. So if you guys are curious, go check those out. But here are my top 10 quarterbacks in this class, and this is a good quarterback class. I don't want to say it's a great one. I think there's about seven to eight guys that I do genuinely like. Nine and 10, I think are okay. Uh, 10, I think, might be have a better career than 9, but we're going off projection. When that, you'll, you'll see when we get there. It is unfortunate, though, because we came into the season thinking this was going to be one of the most loaded quarterback classes we've had in some time. Jackson Dart from Ole Miss, he went back to school. We had T Quinn Ewers from Texas. He also went back to school. Shadur Sanders went back to school. Cam Ward went back to school. Tyler Van Dyke, DJ Uyagalale, like, uh, those are guys that probably could have cracked this top 10 each and every one of them and they are not in this class so it's not an elite quarterback class but I think there are some quality guys in this class that could be starting quarterbacks in the league let's kick things off with my number 10 quarterback and that is Jordan Travis I think he's got solid arm strength Florida State we saw how important he was to that Florida State offense a team that was undefeated and then he went hurt and they remained undefeated they didn't make the college football playoff because Jordan Travis was gone. He's super sharp with the football. Um, just hits his receivers in stride, makes really good decisions with the football, doesn't turn the football over. I believe he had two interceptions on the season for Florida State. He's a very accurate quarterback who makes the right decisions. He can hit balls at all three levels, and he has the ability to run. Lots of RPOs with him and Trey Benson. He was able to escape the pocket, make good reads, and take off with his legs. Now, he is coming off an injury, though. We saw the bad hip drop tackle, ended up hurting his leg, ended up missing the rest of the season. That could be something that messes with his mobility, which is a big part of Jordan Travis's game that we need to pay attention to. On top of that, his mechanics are very inconsistent. Whether that is in terms of the way he throws the ball, he's got a little bit of like Philip Rivers to him in terms of he sidearms the football, doesn't really have a great throwing motion, which is something I want to pay attention to going forward. And then he doesn't go through his progressions all the time. He'll sit on one route with the receiver for quite a bit. And I don't love that. He reminds me of a bigger Kyler Murray in a way. I think Kyler Murray is a far more superior quarterback, better arm, better runner, all of that. But in terms of play style, I do see some similarities between him and Kyler Murray. Jordan Travis is a good quarterback. He's probably going to go in that round five to seven range, a day three pick, but he's got some upside. An older quarterback prospect, played at Louisville, played at Florida State, showed some flashes at both. I think he was a legit Heisman candidate pre-injury. I've got him at number 10. I think he's got some upside. At number nine, one of the most controversial quarterbacks in the class, and it's Joe Milton. Truthfully, I think Joe Milton's not very good. I'm going to be completely honest. I think Jordan Travis is a better quarterback than Joe Milton, but I think Joe Milton's upside pushes him up to number nine. That's it. Joe Milton probably has the greatest arm on planet Earth. He can throw the ball 90 yards, I'm fully convinced, and it just flicks off his wrist. He has one of the greatest arms I've ever seen. He's also an elite athlete at the quarterback position. Really good runner. He's probably going to run in the four fours. And due to his size, he's six five. He's got a really good frame for the quarterback position. He's big. He can throw the football. He can run. Josh Allen prototype, right? Wrong. He has some of the worst footwork in the pocket I have ever seen. He is a statue in the pocket. Doesn't move his feet. He is as stiff as a mannequin, and I hate to see it. I'm a Tennessee fan, so I don't want to hear people saying, oh, you're hating on Joe. No, I watched the Tennessee games, and – if there was a decent, like a, if Nico was the quarterback for Tennessee this year, that team could have made the college football playoff. That defense was that good. They had weapons. Joe Milton threw them out of these games. He doesn't scan the field well either. 
he stares down his receivers, which is an issue that a lot of these quarterbacks have, to be completely honest. He stares down his receivers. If it's not there, he takes off and runs. And on top of that, he has absolutely horrendous accuracy. He cannot hit the side of the barn. You can have the greatest arm on planet Earth, but if you can't connect with your receivers, it's not going to work. He's a worse version of Anthony Richardson. I thought Anthony Richardson was the number three or four quarterback last year just because he was younger, and you could see the arm strength, the mechanics. He was better in the pocket. Joe Milton is not that. The upside is there, though, because he has some elite athletic traits. But from a technicality standpoint, Joe Milton has way too many concerns, and I would stay away from Joe Milton in this class. He's probably going to go in the fourth or fifth round just because people are going to fall in love with the arm strength. But even then, at the Senior Bowl, Joe Milton didn't really impress many people. We'll see what ends up happening, but I got Joe Milton at number nine. At number eight, it's Michael Pratt. And this is where the quarterbacks that I like start to kick in. I do like Travis a little bit, but Michael Pratt is a very interesting quarterback. One of the better quarterbacks in the history of Tulane. Very accurate with the football. Complete night and day difference from Joe Milton that we just talked about. He's got a fluid, quick release. That ball zips out of his hands extremely fast and he connects on a lot of his passes i want to say he completed 67 percent of his passes somewhere in that range last year for tulane very impressive with some good weapons there as well he's also extremely tough which i really really like to see you see it on the runs and that's where the comp of joe burrow comes in i know people are going to talk about how is he joe burrow i'm not saying he's joe burrow he's like Derek carr daniel jones and joe burrow If they all had a baby, that's Michael Pratt. His athleticism is that of Daniel Jones. His accuracy and the way he composed himself in the pocket is reminiscent of Derek Carr. But his toughness does remind me of Burrow. He'll take a hit, and he gets right up points for the first down. He's a really fun quarterback who's got a different type of swagger to him that I really, really like. But there are some issues with him. If there's pressure in his face, He's not very good at the pre-snap of recognizing blitzes. And when there is pressure, he collapses. He forces the ball into tight windows, makes bad decisions with the football. That's the area I want to see Michael Pratt improve in the most, is recognizing things pre-snap. Also, his arm strength isn't exactly elite. He doesn't have a bad arm by any means, but he just doesn't have that deep ball that deep ball arm that you love to see. Another Derek Carr thing. Stares down his receivers a little bit as well. I mean, it's an issue that we're going to talk about a lot with a lot of these quarterbacks. I like Pratt, though. I think he should go in the third round personally because I think he's a good athlete. He's accurate the football, and he makes good decisions. He's not this elite generational quarterback, nothing like that. He's probably a game manager type guy at the next level, but a game manager is one of the worst terms in the football because game managers – you could, Brock Purdy is a game manager. He's not an elite athlete, doesn't have an elite arm, none of that stuff, but he can win the game. Tom Brady was a game manager quarterback. He is not this elite type of guy, but he manages the game, reads things well. I think Pratt could be a similar type of quarterback. Shades of Joe Burrow, Derek Carr, Daniel Jones is my comp. I like Pratt. This is where the quarterbacks that I do like start to come in. And then the quarterbacks that I really like start at seven with Spencer Rattler. We're going to talk about it. People with Spencer Rattler are going to pay attention to what happened at Oklahoma. Ugly ending to his tenure at Oklahoma with Lincoln Riley. Bad character concerns. His teammates hated him. The Netflix show didn't help him at all. He looked like an absolute douche. But as he's gotten older and gotten to South Carolina, he completely turned his career around for the better consistency is going to be a concern with him. Lots of turnovers at South Carolina, forced the ball into tight windows, tried to play hero ball, and it led to interceptions. We don't want to see that from Spencer Rattler. Forces the football, that's where a lot of his interceptions come from. He's got an elite arm though. It's up there. You could argue Caleb Williams, Joe Milton, Spencer Rattler, and Drake May. Those are the best four arms in the class. Rattler has shown some Have you seen some of just these highlight tapes that he has put out um, on Instagram? He has some of the most ridiculous throws, granted without pads on, that you will ever see. He's also pretty accurate with the football, and it zips out of his hands super quickly. 
makes good decisions, connects with receivers consistently, and he has the ability to move around. I don't think his mobility is like a defining part of his game, but it is something he can do. He reminds me of Dak Prescott, and funnily enough, Dak Prescott was my comp when I did the video the week before the Senior Bowl, and then he went on to win Senior Bowl MVP similarly to Dak Prescott. Rattler is going to be a starting quarterback at some point in the NFL. I think each of these next few guys will get starting opportunities. Rattler is a good quarterback. He completely flipped the narrative on his career by going to South Carolina. And you love to see the underdog story. A guy who was a number one recruit ended up being projected number one back-to-back years. Nothing ended up coming of it. Goes to South Carolina. And while he's not going to be a first-round pick, he could be a second-rounder legitimately after what we saw at the Senior Bowl. I like the Spencer Rattler kid. I think he's going to be a fun quarterback. I've got him at number seven. At number six, we got J.J. McCarthy. He is going to be a first-round pick. There's no question about it. I think J.J. McCarthy is a good quarterback, but I don't think he's one of the five best in this class. And I know the Jim Harbaugh quote and just seeing him in these mock drafts, NFL teams are going to fall in love with him, and rightfully so. There's a lot to love with J.J. McCarthy. He has an incredible, just incredible mechanics, really good footwork in the pocket, excellent throwing motion. The ball zips out of his hand quickly. And in terms of accuracy, he puts the ball on a string. It's up there with the next guy as probably the best ball placement in the entire class. He puts the ball in places where nobody else but his receivers can go get it. He also has the ability to run. He's got a really good arm. He's mobile. He's got great mechanics. He's accurate. But he doesn't throw the ball away. There are times where he's just running around. He's okay taking hits. He doesn't want to throw the ball away. He'll try and force the ball into tight windows. That's something with J.J. that I want to see improve. Deep ball accuracy is also suspect at times. While he has the arm to hit deep, it just doesn't connect. It's very similar to a Joe Milton in that regard. He's more more accurate than Joe Milton. But on top of that, we didn't really see him utilized a ton in this Michigan offense. This is a team that ran the ball extensively with Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. He didn't really get to show what type of an elite quarterback he is. There's still a lot of question marks with J.J. McCarthy. I think he reminds me of a more athletic version of Kirk Cousins. Accurate with the football, makes good decisions, Act like I said, accurate again. That's the defining part of J.J. McCarthy's game. He's going to be a first-rounder. He's probably going to go in the top 10 based on all the accounts that we're hearing. He is not a guy that I want to start right away. He's not. I want to sit him for a year maybe two. Let him learn the NFL game. Let him get more acclimated to NFL offenses and then give him the chance to go start. He's going to be a solid quarterback, but I like a couple of these other guys' prospects a little bit more. I've got him at number six. Entering the top five now, I've got Michael Penix Jr. at number five. Now, I know everyone's going to be like, well, J.J. McCarthy outplayed Michael Penix Jr. in the national championship. True, but Michael Penix has outplayed him throughout their entire collegiate careers, let's be honest. Uh, The injuries and the age are going to be the concerns with Michael Penix Jr. He has a really bad injury history dating back to his time at Indiana. But once he transferred to Washington, the injuries weren't really a thing for him. He didn't really suffer any serious injuries. Age, he is one of the older quarterbacks in this class. I believe he's going to be around 23 at the time of the draft. And he's not a great athlete. But in terms of a thrower, he probably is the best pure throwing quarterback in this entire draft class. He has exceptional ball placement. He puts the ball between two defenders in spaces that I can't even see on the field at times. I don't know how his vision is that perfect. He has some of the best ball placement in the entire class. He also scans the field really well. If the first guy isn't open, he continues to read his progressions, go through, and make sharp decisions with the football. And he's also got an elite arm. He can hit the ball, hit receivers at all three levels, and you love to see that. He is a Matthew Stafford-type quarterback with me in terms of just the elite arm strength and the ball placement that those two possess. Very similar in that regards. Left-handed quarterbacks, we don't really have. I don't think there is a starting lefty in the NFL right now, but we love to root for those guys. We don't see them very often, so it's always unique when we get a left-handed quarterback in the process. But Michael Penix Jr., in my opinion, should be a first-round pick. He's probably going to slip out of the first round because in the forefront of everyone's mind is going to be that national championship game where against that Michigan team, they really struggled. But 
I think Penix is a good quarterback, and I've got him at number five. At number four, we've got Bo Nix. Now, I like Bo Nix a little bit more than I like Michael Penix, simply due to mobility. He is a better runner. He is better on the run, and that might be the best part of Bo Nix's game. His ability to hit receivers on the move is very, very impressive, and I am a big fan of that when it comes to Bo Nix's game. He's very comfortable in the pocket, too. He just he moves his feet well, doesn't really get phased by contact pressure, and he's really good at reading the field as well. The, the things everyone's going to talk about. Bo Nix is old. So we've seen old quarterbacks come in, old quarterbacks come in and be effective. On top of that, what he did at Auburn was a disaster. I will admit that. But this is a completely different quarterback than the one that Auburn had. He's more comfortable in the pocket. He is more accurate. He reads the field better. Once he went to Oregon, his career changed completely for the better. Bo Nix is a really good quarterback. He reminds me of Alex Smith in terms of really smart, comfortable in the pocket, can move around a little bit. But there are some concerns there as well. And I don't know that Bo Nix is ever going to be this elite upper echelon quarterback. That being said, I think he should be a first-round pick. I think people are starting to come around to the idea of, oh, Bo Nix is good. Like He's not this old hag that we thought he was. Bo Nix is a good quarterback, and that's that. I think he, I think he's going to be a really solid player. Probably going to go to the second round. I would love to see a team like the Broncos, the Seahawks, the Giants take a chance on Bo Nix. I think he could be a nice, a really, really good player for their teams coming forward. Number two and number three are interchangeable. And by by the time of the draft, my number three quarterback might be number two. My number three as of now is Jaden Daniels. Now, Jaden Daniels is a guy who admittedly coming into the year, I was like, Jaden Daniels sucks. He's got, yes, he can run better than 90% of these NFL quarterbacks. And he might be the best running quarterback in the league when he's drafted. His elusiveness, his ability to make jukes in the open field, make guys miss, is uncanny at the quarterback position. The only guy I could compare it to is Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields. But he also has a really good arm. He connects at all three levels. He makes good decisions with the football. His accuracy can be spotty at times, and he has the tendency to stare down his receivers. On top of that, as a runner, you got to learn to slide, especially being such a slim build that Jaden Daniels is. You have got to take a slide at times because he takes some very unnecessary hits that are really going to hurt him come NFL time. Jaden Daniels is a guy that I am coming around to more and more when I watch him. The more I read about him, I'm like, Jaden Daniels is really, really good in terms of just his running ability alone separates him from anybody else in this class. The Heisman winner. There's a lot of things to love about Jane Daniels. I've got him at number three, and I've got Drake May at number two. We all knew who number one was going to be. But Drake May, excellent arm. A lot of people are going to compare him to Josh Allen in this regard in terms of he is big, he is strong, he's got a great arm, and he's a solid runner as well. He's also a very moldable athlete, I think. I still think Drake May is rather raw at the quarterback position. I don't think we've seen the best of Drake May even close yet. He can move. He can hit some really good plays deep down the field. His deep ball accuracy is really, really good. Um, I think his timing can be off at times, excuse me, especially in terms of accuracy. He misses by a split second far too often, and he throws off his back foot a lot. His back pedal is inconsistent. And he doesn't like to attack the middle of the field at all. And that's something that is a bit odd. We just don't see him throw down the middle very often. So I'd like to see that improve. He reminds me of Justin Herbert. I think Drake May is a good quarterback. I don't get why people are coming around, like thinking he's a bad quarterback. I saw um, today that I'm blanking on the name, but some analysts said he shouldn't even be a first round pick. That's ludicrous. He's going in the top 10. But the number one guy is going to be Sam Hartman. No, I'm kidding. It's Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this class. Don't let first round mock fool you. This is a guy who is going to be the number one pick, regardless of who has it. If it's Chicago, if they trade it, Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this class. 
and I do have him compared to Patrick Mahomes. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Patrick Mahomes, but in terms of play style, it is very Mahomes-esque. He's got excellent arm strength. He's impossible to bring down. I mean, he is so slippery in the backfield, and the way he can juke guys out, make plays, keep his eyes down the field, and then throw the ball 40 yards. He reads the field really well, which is the problem with him because he sees the checkdowns, but he is always looking for the home run. You've got to take what the defense is giving you at time, and that's not going to fly at the NFL level. You've got to take what the defense gives you. You can't always get a touchdown on every single play. He holds the ball pretty loose, too, with one hand, and he likes to hold it on, onto it for too long. Just throw it away. Take your check down. Don't force anything down the field. That's my biggest complaint with Caleb Williams. But would I give him that generational tag? I think I would. I think he is the best quarterback prospect that I have ever watched. Granted, this is only my third draft doing this, so this could change. But what he can do on the football field is absolutely incredible. And the character concerns are made up. I don't believe those for one second. The kid likes to paint his nails. So the kid, there's just the stories that are made up. He's a bad teammate. So no, we've not heard a single one of his teammates come out and criticize Caleb Williams for being a bad teammate. It's all made up stuff to make the kid look bad. And I just am not buying it. He's the number one quarterback in this class. And I, that's that's my opinion. Obviously, my list isn't the right list. It's just my list. If you guys have a different top 10, let me know what you guys think down below. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.